The fifth generation was a shit show. Can I say shit show? I, I have to look at my notes. That's how much of a shit show it was. 3DO, 93. Atari Jaguar, 93. Then finally the PlayStation. There's too many players here. There's too many players in the fifth generation. Something's gotta give. It really was a fascinating time. So many people from companies like 3DO and Sega all moved to Nintendo or to Sony, and both of them just became major powerhouses for the next several years. I think history shows that the Nintendo 64 was one of the stranger systems ever created. On the one hand, it, it lost. It, the PlayStation was far more successful than the N64. On the other hand, it ran arguably the two best video games ever made. Super Mario 64, launch game for the N64. Here we go! And then a few years after that, The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. And then you can't forget GoldenEye. And suddenly, you know, the Nintendo 64 is a staple of college dorm rooms and drinking. And it's one of these things that you are sitting there with, passing that controller around, playing nonstop. But something dramatic happened in the next generation, the 32-bit generation. Sony showed up. PlayStation. The Walkman people have the nerve to come out with this PlayStation. As a Sega kid, talking to my Nintendo enemies, suddenly we're looking at this PlayStation like, what? For several years of my career, we're, we're at Sega. When we heard a big company like Sony was going to get into the game industry, it was laughable. Fly, Plaything. Fly. You're not ready. And then when the PlayStation first came out, we were all pretty blown away and quite frankly, pretty scared. But what it was, was Sony making a calculated effort that you know later you see Microsoft come around and do the exact same thing. Them saying, we are coming in here, we're seeing what this market is and we're staking our claim in it. And Sony showed up in kind of an accidental way. They were supposed to have just partnered with Nintendo, make a CD attachment for the Super Nintendo. Relations fell apart. A lot of people historically, they blame Nintendo for kind of bungling that, but the bottom line is. The media is much cheaper to produce. One thing is produce the cartridges with a motherboard inside. The one thing is just to print the CD. And thus, it was expensive to develop for to get those things to test them out, to make, where are you making your return? You know what I mean? That's the whole problem. You and me. Booyah, Grandma. Booyah. The thing that Sony really did that was different is the attitude that they brought to marketing the first generation of the PlayStation. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff. But it was this idea that you should be moving on from whatever kiddie games you played before. There was times when I, you know, I'm in high school now, and I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be in this hobby, right? Like, this is cool, and this is fun, and it's distractions, and you know, it's, but I want something more, and I didn't, know what, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what to say. And then one day, you know, me and a friend went off, and we rented some games for this PlayStation I had just gotten, and one of them was Metal Gear Solid. And I put in Metal Gear Solid, and for the second time in my life, video games changed my life. Colonel, what's a Russian gunship doing here? And the one of them is on his knees, his name's Otacon, and he's crying over Sniper Wolf, and she's staring up at the sky, dying. Set me free. And I'm tearing up with my, with my other high school friend right next to me, and you get attached to these characters, that's when you get an experience you can't get anywhere else. And the seed, the first taste I had of that was Metal Gear. And it was like, just that moment of like, this is it, man. Like, this is... We have the Sega Dreamcast. That was the last of Sega's uh, consoles, unfortunately. Sega, which had been in a dogfight with Nintendo for generation after generation, they began to fade away. The Dreamcast was so far ahead of its time, nobody knew what to make of it. And then you had companies like EA that basically just said, we're a juggernaut and we are pulling support from your console. And, you know, eventually the write down on the Sega Saturn forced Sega out of the hardware business and they became a software pu publisher, which is essentially what they are now. I owe you nothing. PlayStation 2, consider even as today, is the most sold video game console in the world. And Sony flips the switch, man. They changed the game with the PlayStation 2. And it was also, it was a bit of a Trojan horse effect in that it was right around the time when DVDs were becoming the most popular medium for home video. It's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The same way that back in the old days, Nintendo kind of had every game you needed to play with maybe one or two exceptions, PS2 was that system for the sixth generation. Your torment is just beginning. 
Then you talk about, okay, PlayStation 2 is where God of War shows up. Then Metal Gear continues to evolve, right? Again, all the games I've just mentioned are exclusive to the PlayStation 2. Sony is swinging like Mike Tyson against your grandmother. If you have a problem, turn off your station. And again, they're, they're the young kids on the block. Right? And then, I mean, Deja Vu comes a knocking, and here Microsoft suddenly announces they're gonna make a system. They're gonna make this Xbox. The Xbox was not a great console. It was a good first step. Microsoft comes out, they know they're gonna take a loss on the Xbox. They take a horrendous loss. They're not making money on it. But Microsoft is so in the black here that they can just say, okay, we'll do this. Microsoft was the Windows company. It was weird enough when Sony, the people who made your television, were gonna make you a game console, but at least they made a thing. And they give you this gigantic black box and this gigantic controller. And you're like, what the hell is this? This thing is a bomb, nobody, What's Halo? That was it for them. That's all they needed. What was Halo? This is gonna be your lucky day. There's the Halo, obviously. There's Fable. You're talking about Knights of the Old Republic. Like, they are saying, we're gonna get you good games, and we're gonna put on them in yellow text only on Xbox. Yeah! Hello? Then Nintendo comes out and they said, all right, you guys love the N64 so much. Let's give you the Nintendo GameCube. If I remember correctly, people laughed at the GameCube. I mean, it was a, it was a purple lunchbox that had a handle on it. it just, and I, I appreciated that because I thought, you know, game consoles previously were meant to be tucked away, hidden, not seen. But Nintendo found itself in an odd position in the beginning of the sixth generation because a lot of gamers, they wanted Nintendo to fight back. They felt like Nintendo had taken its lumps from Sony, from Sega. Face it, Nintendo. You aren't worth waiting for. And again, they had lost before they began on this one. Uh, remember, we only have this small group of franchises that we really love. I'm sure other people will come program for it. They did not. No one decided to come make games for them. A lot of that focus had gone on to the PlayStation 2. That really is where the industry had shifted over to. But this was the beginning of a change, where it wasn't so much just about how good are your graphics or how good are your games, but what else can your console do? PS3, they sort of came in arrogant. This was the biggest Trojan horse I think anyone's ever pulled off.